evening, I'm Sonia Kalaisilvam and this is Kini News. The MACC has raided two safe houses in its investigation of a case involving the Menteri Besar Selangor Incorporated. Azambaki said a politician linked to the case would be called in to have a statement recorded at the appropriate time. Ya, salah satu daripada itu saya tak nafikan memang ada dikaitkan dengan seorang ahli politik yang ternama tapi saya tak boleh terdahkan nama ahli politik, ahli politik itu. Ya. ya, dia akan dipanggil pada satu masa yang difikirkan sesuai boleh pegang penyiasat saya uh, uh, seperti mana lazimnya kami perlu uh, mendapatkan uh, segala bukti-bukti yang kita rasa wajar yang telah uh, kita perlu dan kita, yang, yang kita perlukan dan telah disahkan barulah uh, orang yang berkenaan akan dipanggil uh, saya tidak memang tidak akan menolak um, atau menafikan beliau akan dipanggil tapi selepas kami ataupun pegawai penyiasat saya berkuasa hati tentang beberapa lagi penemuan uh, dokumen dan juga wang uh, yang berkaitan This takes the total number of safe houses rated to three. Previously, the MACC raided another property in KL linked to a prominent politician. The MACC raided an apartment unit in Kuala Lumpur on Saturday night, which they suspected was a safe house that a prominent politician used to stash illegally gained cash. An MACC source told Malaysia Kini the 10 p.m. raid was carried out as part of its investigation into the politicians suspected of corruption. The source said another suspect, whom investigators apprehended earlier to facilitate their investigation, revealed the safe house's location. The source added that in total they found about 1.5 million Singapore dollars, equivalent to about 5 million ringgit in the premises. According to sources, the initial investigation revealed that a business person rented the apartment unit to keep money for the politician. MACC has seized the cash, allegedly kept at the unit for future political activities as evidence. Meanwhile, Bernama reported the MACC also froze around 15 bank accounts belonging to several individuals and companies, including those believed to be used for facilitating corruption. It said that MACC Chief Commissioner Azam Baki, when contacted, confirmed the seizure and the arrests. A PKR MP has denied that he is leaving Johor over the changes to the weekend. This was after a post saying he would leave Johor and live in Kelantan went viral. Pasir Gudang MP Hassan Abdul Karim has denied making a statement that he was willing to leave Johor to live in Kelantan. This is over the decision to revert to a Saturday-Sunday weekend. In a brief statement last night, Hassan shared a copy of the false claim that had gone viral on the internet and dismissed it. He said that as a member of parliament for Pasir Gudang, he would serve the people there while staying in Johor. Hassan added that he is a loyal Johor citizen, a loyal Malaysian citizen, and respected the institutions of constitutional monarchy and parliamentary democracy. On Friday, Johor Regent Tunku Ismail Sultan Ibrahim told those who are not pleased with the decision to revert to a Saturday-Sunday weekend to move to other states. Without mentioning names, he said, if there are parties upset or dissatisfied due to personal agendas, want to provoke the people or have political interests, they are welcome to move to states that still have Friday and Saturday as weekends. Hassan had previously criticized the decision, saying that Friday is a holy day in Islam and highly regarded by Muslims worldwide. He had made it clear that while he had the right to voice his opinion on the matter, he was not challenging anyone's authority. The daughter of Al Arkham's founder has denied that GISBH practices deviant teachings. However, she could not rule out the possibility that some in GISBH were still following deviant practices. The daughter of Al Arkham founder Ashari Muhammad has denied that Global Ikhwan Services and Business Holdings practices deviant teachings. In a press conference today, Kaula Ashari said the members had repented and were committed to not practice any teachings that have been declared deviant. Di ASB sendiri kita uh, konsistenlah uh, untuk tidak lagi uh, mengamalkan lagi apa-apa ajaran yang telah dikatakan uh, sesat ataupun salah. Dan uh, rasanya mungkin ada juga yang tahu macam mana kita sendiri dah mengikuti kursus-kursus uh, oleh pihak uh, berkuasa termasuk daripada pihak Jabatan Agama sendiri dan uh, juga kita mengikuti juga proses uh, istitabah yang telah dilakukan uh, dan setelah itu kita pun uh, telah uh, berkomitmenlah 
untuk tidak lagi mengamalkan apa-apa yang telah dilakukan sebelum inilah mungkin daripada zaman arkam dan setelah itu. Meanwhile, in response to a question, she said she was not sure if there was still a small group of GISBH members practicing the deviant teachings. She added that the group is monitored by the religious authorities to make sure that such practices do not happen again. Kaula also claimed that schools under GISBH used a syllabus set by the Selangor Islamic Religious Department. When asked about the claims on exploitation of children at its welfare homes, she said she couldn't comment as it is still under investigation. Mirwan Melaka is the latest state to issue a fatwa declaring them as deviant. Here's more on that. The Malacca Fatwa Committee has issued a fatwa declaring the teachings and practices of global Ikhwan services and business holdings as deviant. State Mufti Abdul Halim Tawil said this was after the committee convened on October 3rd. He told reporters today that the teachings and practices of GISBH are similar to elements associated with al arkam an Islamic sect which was declared deviant in 1994. Similarities were also observed with Rufaka Corporation, which was banned in 2007. He said there are identifiable elements of Alarcom's teachings within GISBH, reflecting the characteristics previously held by former followers of Alarcom and Rufaka, who have rebranded themselves as GISBH. He added that they have concluded that there are significant similarities in terms of beliefs and practices, as well as the perspectives of GISBH members regarding religion. On September 21st, Malacca State Executive Councilor Ramad Mariman said 285 items associated with Al-Arkam were discovered in raids on 19 premises linked to GISBH in the state. He said the raids, which lasted from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., seized 12 photos of Al-Arkam's founder, Ashari Muhammad, also known as Abuya. Malacca is the latest state to declare GISBH as deviant. Others include Selangor, Pahang, and Perlis. Still on the topic, a group of 96 parents that have claimed that their children were not rescued were instead seized by the authorities in the raids on GISBH. A spokesperson for the group said 80% of the parents were not members of GISBH. A group of 96 parents who were detained in a crackdown against GISBH are demanding the return of their children. The children are under the custody of the Social Welfare Department. The parents claim that both their arrest and the removal of, of custody over their 174 children were unlawful. In a press conference yesterday, the spokesperson for the group, Federal Territory Bursatu, Information Chief Tun Faisal Ismail Aziz, alleged that the authorities had not rescued the children as claimed. According to him, not all the parents in the group, which is known as GPAAK, are GISBH members. He also claimed that not all the children were taken from welfare homes, as some were taken from their own homes. He said the children were not saved but were seized by the authorities. Elaborating on the status of the GPAAK members, Faisal alleged that 80% were not GISBH members, while the other 20% were. He said of the 96 parents, 49% had no ties to GISBH, and the 51% who were related to the group were either staff at GISBH and its companies, teachers at its schools, or caretakers and volunteers who worked at the group's welfare homes. Faisal added that all 96 parents possess valid marriage certificates and have registered their children's births with the National Registration Department. The group had 12 demands for the government, which included to promptly return the children to their parents and take action against government staff who abused their power in this case. Malaysia Kini is seeking feedback from the relevant parties regarding the allegations from the parents. Mahathir Mohamad has admitted that one of the reasons for his defamation suit against Zahid Amidi was because the latter had sued him first. Former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said one of the reasons he filed a defamation suit against Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi was because the latter had sued him. Mahathir was referring to his defamation suit against Zahid over an allegation of an identity card bearing the name Mahathir Anaklilaki Iskandar Kudi. Meanwhile, Zahid is suing Mahathir over an allegation that the former tried to lobby the latter in 2018 to drop criminal charges. Mahathir was the Prime Minister at the time. Zahid had filed his suit against Mahathir in April 2022, while the latter sued him in July. 
Mahathir said this in court today when asked by Zahid's counsel on why he had waited five years to sue him over the statement. Mahathir's lawyer, Muhammad Rafiq Rashid Ali, then objected to the line of cross-examination, pointing out that civil law gives a plaintiff up to six years from the date of an impugned statement. In his statement of defense, Zahid had denied that the remark had ever been malicious, slanderous, or harmed Mahathir's public reputation. He also claimed that the name on the IC referred to an individual based on information in an old copy of an identity document. That is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. I'm Sonia Kari Thanks for watching.